Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I hope you're all well today. Um, and as you can see from the uh, fancy graphics in front of you, what we're going to be doing today is upgrading the ZX Spectrum next. Now I've got the case here laid out in front of me. This assembly is pretty easy. So I'm going to whiz through it at, uh, at a fair old pace. But uh, first of all you need to turn the machine over and you find that there are six screws about the base. Two are under the feet and the rest are highlighted there. It's um, quite a simple case of removing the screws. Now the screws themselves are fitted into a, 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 um, a bush that's uh, set into the plastic. So um, they are quite a nice fit and uh, hopefully the case should last for many years. Fingers crossed anyway. No more snap plastic like on the old machines. I've got many Commodore 64s and um, one or two Amigas as well with screws broken and the plastic post broken and snapped off. But anyway, once the screws are removed it's just a simple case of wiggling the case about and the bottom should lift off quite easily. It is a good fit having said that and you will have to jiggle it about just a little bit. There are no cables or connections fitted to it so it's pretty easy to remove and safe to lift off without uh, damaging anything. Right, as you can see, we now have the motherboard itself, which has one, two, three, four screws on the main motherboard and another four on the auxiliary PCB here, which is the SD card reader and the reset buttons. So it's just a case of removing these screws and then we've got full access to the Sinclair Spectrum next. And that's it, once the screws are out you can lift the motherboard out. You have to pull it towards you slightly to get the connections away from the plastic case. You mustn't lift the board straight out, you have to disconnect the keyboard ribbons. If you don't, there's a chance you'll damage the ribbons. And that's it. Okay, so what I thought I'd do is uh, I already had a Raspberry Pi and uh, I thought it'd be a good idea to solder it up and pop it into the Spectrum next. Uh, what I didn't have, as you can see what I'm doing here, um, I didn't have a header. I bought this and used it as a Commodore 64 uh, emulator. Uh, it did work really well and it booted up fast, it was good. But I didn't use it, I didn't have a case to put it in, so I thought, right, it's a good, uh, it's a good bit of kit to get inside the ZX Spectrum next and it allowed me to load TZX's SID files and various other things none of which I've been able to do as my Spectrum is unaccelerated and didn't come with the Pi fitted. So it's a standard Raspberry Pi, it's important that you put the header on the correct side so it's away from the logo or underneath the PCB, away from the um, micro card reader. It's quite important to be careful here with the soldering. I know I've sped this video up uh, somewhat because it's not very interesting watching someone soldering but um, if you solder a board you have to be careful not to get the pins bridged or any stray bits of solder float about the place. But it's very easy, it's through hole, it's nice and easy to do, it takes, it literally takes five minutes to solder it on. It's quite important to keep the edge connector straight and in line and flat to the PCB when you solder it. So what I usually do is solder one pin of each corner and then uh, just make sure it's straight, flat and level. Because if you solder the full thing, it's uh, very difficult to line it back up. It can be done, but it's difficult. Why make life hard for yourself? You might as well do it properly in the first place. So just put a tack weld in each corner, tack solder rather, and um, away you go. Nice and easy. Job done. So uh, all these, uh, this next guide is how to download the software and to put it onto the SD card or the micro SD card of the um, Raspberry Pi. Like I say, this is an, an Apple sort of walkthrough. It is very similar for Windows. There's, the software is the same. You're downloading the same stuff, but you won't be using Apple Pie Baker to burn it onto an SD card. I don't know what you do with Windows. I guess it's WinImage or something like that. I'm sure the guys at the forum will be able to help. Like I say, I don't use Windows for writing images. I try to use my Mac as it's, in my mind, easier and somewhat faster than using Windows. 
Not always the case, of course, but in some occasions. So once you've downloaded the image, I um, copied it to the desktop. Click on the file and you'll see there an IMG image, which is obviously an image of the SD card. So open that up with PyBaker, find it wherever you've saved it to. I dragged it onto desktop just to make life a little bit easier, but generally speaking it's in downloads. Uh, and click restore. Now it should if you've highlighted your micro SD card, which is 3.8 gig in this particular instance, uh, it will quickly burn that to the card and it should be ready to go. You don't have to do anything else with it. You can take that out, pop it into the uh, Raspberry Pi, once it's fitted to the next and the case is bolted up, you're ready to go. So now it's time to rebuild the case. We're going to pop the Raspberry Pi on and bolt it up. It's quite simple, it's just the reverse of what we did before. But one thing to remember is when we're fitting the Raspberry Pi, it's important to get the pins in line, make sure it's fitted correctly, the orientation is correct, and everything looks good. In this case, it does. Uh, one more thing to remember is that my um, Spectrum Next came without an accelerated Pi fitted, so it means there is a blank on the holes for the case, which is this thing here, and it's a bit of a bugger to remove. It is a tight fit, it's got, it has one screw hole in it in place, and it is particularly difficult to get off. But if you jiggle it about a bit, it will come. It's not happy, but it will come off. Okay, so we've got the blank removed now, and so we can think about bolting the case back up. All we have to do is make sure the orientation of the motherboard is correct. It's pretty obvious which way it goes. The Raspberry Pi goes to the back. Let's fit the keyboard cables back in. There should be three. It's important that they're in nice and snug all the way home. Don't bend them, don't crease them. If you damage these ribbons, you'll need a new membrane. So, good to be careful. Now, all of you guys who've got the original ZX Spectrums and the Spectrum Pluses and especially the 128s will know that the original ribbons do go brittle with time and they crack and you get all kinds of issues, keys don't work, all the rest of it. Now the, case, the uh, motherboard itself is fairly easy and simple to put back into the case although you do have to slide it in at a little bit of an angle to get the ports to line up first and then line it up and it should line up pretty easily with the post that's there and then you'll be ready to pop the screws in. Just do a double, do a double check before you put the screws in that the ports do line up properly. They all appear to here and everything looks good. So we're going to do a little bit of a video speed up here as it's not very interesting. All I'm doing is put the screws in. What I tend to do is I'll turn the screws anti-clockwise first to try and get the threads to line up and then I will screw the screw in. This prevents you having to cut a new thread and damage the posts. Uh, plastic doesn't like having the threads recut. Once again, make sure everything's lined up and everything's good. It does look okay, nothing missing. Just make sure the SD card comes in and out okay, which it does and we're ready to pop the bottom on and rebuild. So that's about it for this part. We've got the case rebuilt now. We're just popping the screws back in. It's nice and easy to do, just the six screws to go back. Um, I will be doing a stream later this afternoon um, where we can see if my Pi installation has worked. Hopefully it has and nothing's gone wrong. So um, hopefully we'll be able to load some TZXs, play some SID files and um, see what else the ZX Spectrum Next can do. So thank you very much, have a good day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.
as well as a group. And sometimes natural urges build up. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Those words were spoken by an electronic computer.